Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to America once again and we're going to revisit one of probably the best known craft breweries from over there, at least it's one of the ones that we see most of over here in Europe. So for this review we are going back to Grand Rapids in Michigan and we're reviewing another beer from Founders Brewing Company and this is one from their Barrow Aged series. So this is called the Barrow Runner, it's an 11.1% Imperial IPA, double IPA, maybe even a triple IPA. I guess at that uh, at that ABV, but it's an IPA nonetheless, hopped with mosaic and aged in rum barrel. So that should be really quite interesting. I'm expecting a lot of um, kind of nice vanilla and uh, brown sugary notes to this beer. So looking forward to seeing how this one turns out. The only other uh, barrel aged IPA I think that I've had was actually from Tamamura Honte and Shiga Kogan beer. I'm sure it was one of the Far East beers that they do, and it was really nice. It was an IPA, an Imperial IPA aged in sake barrels which turned out uh, to be really quite unusual and I think that was review number 400 I did that one for because that was quite a special beer but certainly looking forward to trying another one it's something you don't come across too often and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from founders before no doubt I will add some more in the near future there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefetch or whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the american beers that i've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Founders Brewing Company then. So this brewery was originally founded back in 1997 as the Canal Street Brewing Company in Grand Rapids in Michigan by two guys, Mike Stevens and David Engbers. But the two were home brewing enthusiasts and they'd only just recently graduated from university at this point, but they both had quite steady jobs. But they later decided that they wanted to follow their passion and they drew up a business plan, took out some hefty loans and quit their jobs. But in the 1800s, several breweries had operated in the Canal Street area of Grand Rapids and this area is apparently now called Monroe Avenue but the original labels on the beers were black and white photos of the original Canal Street breweries with the word Founders above it and this was how the brewery became known as the Founders Brewing Company. They officially changed the name a little bit later but since the mid-2000s the brewery's grown really quite substantially and they now produce around 340,000 barrels of beer per year and their sales market is constantly growing. They're further, they're exporting to lots and lots of different places and I do suspect that 340,000 barrels per year figure is uh, is out of date. I think they're expanding that every year. But they also have a tap room at their brewery which overlooks the brewery facilities and there you can actually watch them brewing the beer. And they also throw an annual festival as well which is called the Founders Fest. They get a lot of local food vendors, a lot of local musicians and things like that. The street outside of the brewery is apparently closed down and uh, you can basically go and try a lot of the different local beers. The Founders beers of course as well and enjoy local food and music which I think is pretty cool but like I say these guys are probably one of the best known American craft breweries that we have over here in Europe. They're one of the most widely exported American beers to Europe from what I gather um, and I've had some really good experiences with them in the past. You know the Kentucky Breakfast Stout's really well known, the Canadian Breakfast Stout was really good as well. I really enjoyed reviewing that one and they've got the two Scotch Ales as well, the Dirty Bastard and the Backwoods Bastard and of course you've got the All Day IPA and things like that as well which is a really um, kind of popular uh, session IPA over in America but yeah cool to get one of the more unusual ones. We do seem to get some of the really random stuff over here in uh in through the system Bolaga, which I think is, is pretty cool. We seem to get founder stuff every kind of month or two, which is nice. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about the brewery for just now. If you want to read a little bit more, check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and keep up to date with all the different beers that they do, because they are a fairly prolific brewery. They've got a, they've got a really good kind of core range there, and they've also got seasonals that come out like clockwork every year. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about these guys. So yeah, I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open up. There you can see the pirate on this one, because it is 
aged in rum barrels and pirates do like rum I must be part pirate as well as part viking and part kelt which you know I wouldn't really complain about that to be honest but there you can see there's the founders brewing bottle cap on this one like I said it's an 11.1% imperial IPA or triple IPA I guess you would have when it's this percentage but um, it should be really nice a mosaic hot IPA aged in rum barrels so we'll see how we get on with this one without further ado let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then Oh, nice little bubble at the top there. I always like doing that. But yeah, let's get it out and into the glass. And I will say, as soon as you open this beer up, you get some of the nice tangerine orangey notes and a bit of the blueberry that you would expect from the mosaic. But look at that. That's a beautiful looking beer. You can smell the, the rum qualities of this, you can really smell the booziness to this beer even when you just open it up. But look at that, that's a lovely nice kind of clear orangey note. There's a solid finger and a third I guess you could say of a frothy, I would say kind of creamy coloured head on this one. It's not perfectly white, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know overall it looks pretty nice actually, so yeah that's pretty cool. So, um, in terms of colour, if I hold it up to the light, I would say it's almost like a, a kind of just regular sort of blood orange. It's not too far away, actually, from this darker orange that you have on the label in terms of colour. But, you know, it looks pretty nice. Pretty much what you would expect from a double IPA, if you like. I'm interested to see, I would have been interested to see what colour it was before they put it in the barrels and see what effect the barrel aging's had on it. But, yeah, it looks exactly as you would expect for a, a double or triple IPA, whatever it actually is. But let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we got on. Like I said, when you open up the bottle, you'll get a little bit of an orangey, tangerine kind of thing, and you can smell some of those nice brown sugars from the rum barrels as well. Ooh. That's really unusual. It's It really does actually smell like, you know, if you open up a bottle of rum and just take a whiff of it. It really is quite like that. Yeah. <laughs> The brown sugars, the sugar cane is coming out of this one. It's quite a sweet smell. If it's rum, you know, in terms of rum, it's quite sweet smell, but there's a lot of booziness coming out of that. You can definitely smell a little bit of the vanilla, the oaky kind of notes as well. But the rum is really prominent in this one. If you go a bit further back and just waft it, you know, as I always call it, the ammonia waft. And we were in the chemistry lab when I was doing my master. We, um, you know, you always waft the chemicals like this to make sure they're not so pungent. But, um, yeah, just take a little bit of time and enjoy that aroma. But yeah, really nice. Really nice orangey and blueberry notes to it as well. There's a little touch of earthiness, but mainly it's those brown rum sugars that are making up the, the, the crux of the aroma here. It's crazy that. It, I've never seen barrel aging have such an effect on the aroma of a beer. You know, with the Scotch ales and the stouts and things like that, yeah, you usually get a bit of vanilla. Yeah, you'll get some, you know, some oaky notes as well. But really in this one, it's amazing how prominent it is, actually. It didn't say on the website how long they'd actually aged it in the barrels for. I'd be very curious to know that. I would guess maybe around three months or something like that, because you wouldn't want it to go um, too far off, if that makes sense. But yeah, especially when it's a hoppy, it's supposed to be a hoppy beer as well. But yeah, big rum notes, a little bit of biscuit, a lot of brown sugar to this one, sugar cane. It's got a little bit of a toasted element, some woody notes, and a little bit of vanilla, like I was saying too. But as I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But let's have a, a taste of this one now. So this one is the Barrel Runner, um, an Imperial IPA hot with mosaic, aged in rum barrels at 11.1%. So let's get stuck into this beer then. Slanger, skull. Yeah. I'm not sure what to make of that one, to be honest. It's not like... It really is not like any of the other um, beers that I've had before. It's not really got a distinctive double IPA character or anything like that. Yeah. I'm going to be straight up and say this isn't one of the best beers that I've had from Founders actually. This one, 
it's, it's even kind of difficult to distinguish it as a beer, to be quite honest. The, it's, it doesn't seem to have a big enough malt base to it, if that makes sense. Like, it really does have, it's almost like when you drink a spirit, it has a bit of sweetness, but usually when it's a beer, you obviously expect like a little bit of a bready body or, you know, a caramelly body or something like that, and you've got a little bit of that. But it does seem, it, it's not even got the body of a liqueur, this one. I'm, I'm really not sure what to make of this beer. Yeah, it's like, you can feel it, it kind of glides across the front of your tongue, then all of a sudden it's like brown sugar, rum sugar, sugar cane. Just, it just suddenly appears in the middle of your palate. Yeah. This, rather than being a beer, this one, it's a little bit more, in terms of flavour, it's a little bit more like a kind of watered down rum, if that makes sense, but at the same time, it's a little bit more oily. It doesn't have the kind of characteristics I would have expected, because as I say, I thought, you know, Rate Beer and Untapped and everything like this had this one listed as a double IP, and I thought, all right, okay, so it'll be a big um, kind of boozy double IPA. But it'll have, you know, the, the rum barrel elements too, but it's almost like the rum has kind of taken over the flavour in this one. Um, and it, the beer, I think, it doesn't, you know, obviously the, the double IPAs and things like that, they don't have the same malt content as, say, an Imperial Stout or something. Um, but this beer, it is almost just, as I say, the, the thing that it really reminds me of a little bit more is like a watered down rum or something like that. It really is quite, um, quite unusual. But that said, as you go further and further into the flavour, I think when your palate adjusts to it a little bit more, you do start to get a little bit more kind of flavour out of it. That rum sugar cane thing, it kind of spreads over the middle of the tongue. There's a little bit of a stronger caramel in the middle of your palate, and as you go further out towards the sides of your tongue, it becomes a little bit more biscuity. There's definitely a sort of vanilla, kind of oaky sort of thing, um, infused in the palate as well, but there's not really a sort of bready malt base or anything like that. The malt base really, it's it's almost just like, it's not waxy, I'm trying to think of the right word. It's almost like your tongue is wax and then you're putting water over the wax, if that makes sense. It's kind of like the flavours just sort of brush over your tongue and kind of disappear. That's the sort of feel that this beer has actually. It's, it's, it's not like anything I've had before this. I mean, as I said, the only other barrel aged Imperial IPA that I've had was one from the Shiga Kogan uh, Tamamura Honten guys out in Japan and that was, it was aged in sake barrels for I think about two months or something like that before they bottled it up and it turned out really really nicely. This one I think, I, I wonder if they've left it in the barrels too long or something like that, pardon me, maybe if it's aged for six months it maybe needs three months or something like that but it's, it's a very, it's quite an unusual beer this, it's almost a bit more like a a, a liqueur or something like that, but it doesn't quite have the sort of creamy thing you would want from a liqueur. Yeah, I'm really not sure what to make of this one. There's a little bit of complexity in the malt base, as I've kind of said, on the hoppy side of things. The hoppy, the hoppy side of this beer is really smooth, as you'd expect. I mean, in the back corners of the palate, little bit of earthiness, that kind of spreads forward a little bit. As you come forward towards the front corners of the palate, there's a little touch of a floral character to it as well. Then you go round the very front curve of the tongue and it's very lightly grassy. And of course, behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you'll get that little oily quality that you'll get from the um, from the, the, the fruity esters extracted from the hops. There's a bit of orange in there, on a bit of sort of tangerine orange, which is what you'd expect from the mosaic. There's a little bit of the blueberry as well, right on the tip of the tongue. And as you go further and further into the aftertaste, it's more the blueberry that's coming out for me. But in terms of the, the beer itself, as I say, I'm just not sure what to make of this one. I was quite excited when I saw this one, but it's not, it's one of these ones that I think it just kind of hasn't really lived up to what I, I expected it to be. And as I say, I had a good experience with that one from Tamamura Hunt and Shiga Kogan, but I think the it's just, it's kind of just over, 
the rum flavours have just kind of overtaken the IPA. Either that or they've not brewed the IPA with enough of a malt base to kind of stand up to the, the barrel aging process. The rum flavours are just a little bit kind of too dominant if that makes sense. If you're going to have an 11.1% barrel aged IPA, you want it to have you know, you want to know that it's an IPA. This one, to me, it doesn't. It, it's not forthright enough in those big IPA qualities. Even if I think about a triple IPA with just a sort of plain malt base to it, it doesn't quite have the the same kind of bitterness and the same fruitiness and things like that that you'd expect. This one is all about those rum sugar cane elements to it. It's just it's just a little bit kind of too dominant that one. I think they need to experiment with this a little bit more and either change the beer that they're aging or reduce the, or do something with the actual aging process itself. This one for me just isn't reflective of what founders can do, if that makes sense. I mean if you think about the, the KBS, the CBS and the barrel aged versions of those, they really are good at barrel aging. I'm just not quite sure what to make of this beer. Um, maybe, it, you know, it could. I would say um, if this was my first one, I'd probably say, yeah, no, the, the Imperial IPA isn't one that you want to barrel age, but I've seen from the, the guys in Japan aging them in sake barrels and things like that, it can work. Um, there's just something, for me, not quite right about this one. And with founders, you know, we can let them off with that because they, they produce some really, really good beers. But for this one, I think just the rum flavours are a little bit dominant. I do love a good rum, the likes of Kraken and some of the other small ones. But I think the flavours, in, in terms of the beer, the rum flavours in this one are just a little bit too dominant for me. Yeah, and even as the beer warms up a little bit, you start to get a little bit more of a kind of bready quality out of it, but I'm just not sure what this beer is aiming for really. It's it's. It's interesting, it's interesting to try something different, but as I say, I wouldn't rate this as one of the stronger ones that I've had from Founders. Um, but So yeah, I guess we can kind of leave it at that for this one. The rum, the, the rum sugary flavours in this are just a little bit too dominant for me, but have a go at it for yourself and see what you think. Some people might really, really like this one. As I say, beer is always subjective, uh, but this one for me is not one of the better ones that I've had um, from Founders. But, I'll, you know, it's not going to put me off trying their other beers. They do some really, really good stuff. Um, so, yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel then, full bodied, I don't think there's much doubt about that. The carbonation is very smooth. It's a big oily mouthfeel that you're getting from this beer, which is no surprise. There's a little touch of hoppy bitterness. I'd be surprised if you're talking over, you know, about 30 IBUs with this beer. It's not going to blow your head off in terms of IBUs. Big malty sweetness to this one. A little bit of juicy fruit, but as I say, the big, the main component in this beer for me is the the sort of rum sugar caney elements to it. Um, and that the flavor, the flavor that it gives you is nice, but you know it's one of these ones where um, it just I'm really just not sure what to make of it to be honest. But yeah, it's been interesting to try something a little bit different. I'll maybe I'm I'd be interested to see um, if the it's I, let, recommend me. I'm stuttering a little bit. Recommend me some uh, some other barrel aged imperial IPAs, and I can see if I can get them and just see um, how they come across. But for me, like I say, I don't think the rum barrel aging really works for the, the double IP. You know, the rum barrel agent I think would be a very interesting thing to try with say the Backwoods Bastard or the Dirty Bastard. I think that would be a really interesting experiment for them to try. Basically a pirate Scotch ale or something like that. Or to try it with one of their Imperial Stouts as well I think would be really nice. But yeah, have a go at this beer for yourself and let me know what you think in the comment section below. But once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Founders Brewing Company as well. It's been cool to review something that's a little bit different, albeit not something that I would rate as one of the stronger beers from Founders Brewing. But once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews and I will catch you guys later. This was the Barrel Runner, part of the Barrel Age series from Founders Brewing Company over in Grand Rapids in Michigan. Until the next time, it's landed just now and I will catch you guys very soon. Skull.